Is that good? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, thanks you guys for being here. I know this is an unconventional place, but we had to feature the van, you know, <laughs> in the show somehow. Um, and this is where a lot of our artists have been spending time this week. This group of artists is from Bolinas, and they've been here for since this, uh, exactly a week, I think, most of them. Um, making work, producing work, working with students. We did a number of public-facing events, a shorts program, a, a film screening, and a, a critique night. The idea is really exchange between this community that they're from and our community and encouraging our students to, to start developing and, and, and focusing on creative community here. So that's why they're here. I don't know if some of you need to be introduced. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you guys want to say anything? <laughs> I think we should all introduce yourself and, and say, identify your work in the show so that people can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My name is Harry Shalom, and this amplifier is right close to the ear. Still louder. Wait for the plane. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's dropping off. Get plane, get plane. One moment. My name is Perry Shimon, and uh, my contribution to this show is called The Coliseum, and it's one year's worth of social media posts, and uh, you'll see it when you come in. There's a, a large screenshot of my daughter. Um, she, we were Skyping, and it, it was very pixelated, and I kind of uh, blew it up large, and Bo helped fabricate this amazing frame for it, uh, and so... Yeah, it's, uh, it's composed of a year's worth of Instagram posts, writing images, moving images, and I was exploring some of the ways that we use images today and uh, different material forms that they take. Hi, my name is Ilka Hartmann, and the photographs are the small little photographs about our town are mine, and also we put out a book that we did a few years ago about our town, and Perry helped me. Oh, sorry. Should I repeat everything? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, my name is Ilka Hartmann, and I'm a photographer, and the wall of the little black and white photographs is mine, and also the book about our town called The Town That Fought to Save Itself, and Perry had the idea because I have already 50 years of work to go through my archive and we brought it all here in a giant box and we scanned a lot and uh, you see some of them on the wall so now we have a really good idea of the decades of life in our little town. Thank you Perry <laughs> and everybody else who helped me with this. Thank you. And I'm Ashley Vibroth <laughs> and we're cleaning something right now. <laughs> um, That'll be a little while. Okay. It's the spoiler in the... Hello. Hello. So, thanks, Bo. <laughs> our, our helper extraordinaire, Bo, he's been amazing. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Which happens to be the nickname of our town, also, is Bo. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so it ties in really nicely. Um, so yeah, I'm Ashley Vibrock, and uh, my contribution to this show is um, uh, two projects that I did um, kind of, one is uh, recreating some photos of my father from the 70s um, with myself in them, and Aubrey Trineman over there shot them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a sculpture about uh, my mother and um, I, I've been working on a, a body of work uh, based on sort of healing work for myself and uh, kind of diving into wounds to move past them and then abstract them and present them to people to hopefully engage in a way that is meaningful to others. So. <laughs> um, my, hi everybody, my name is Charlie Callahan and um, I make work 
that deals with um, trying to find the universe in small things. And so this was a good chance to print some, you take advantage of the facilities and work with print, which isn't usually my medium, but um, I did do make a lot of trips to the beach and incorporate things that I would find here, which amazingly enough, you guys have clean beaches. So. <laughs> um, and we live in a town that's also really conscious of that as well, but there are, there, it's easy to find um, straws, styrofoam, everything else that we're putting into the system. And um, so this installation was specific to what I found here, and I hope you will enjoy it. Hi. Public speaking is not my forte. Um, uh, I'm Mariah Gardner, and my work is the, uh, there's a set of long exposures um, on the back wall that I took with the medium format camera and um, did those in places that I felt like were somewhat connected to the idea of utopia and searching for utopia. Um, one of them is the Grand Canyon, which was obviously a really beautiful place and I had this amazing experience of walking up and seeing it by moonlight for the first time and feeling totally enchanted. And um, the other two are Arcosanti that are in the diptych. Um, the next one is a tiny gold town or a tiny ghost town called Gold Point in Nevada. Um, that's a really funny little place. It's actually very uh, right wing conservative. I didn't know that when I showed up there in the dead of night. Um, so it's it's a different sort of utopia for a different sort of people. Um, and then the, the last one is uh, the town that we live in, which I think is probably the closest that I've come to a utopian community. And the podium um, that sits back from those has a bunch of postcards on them, and that's part of the project as well. Um, the whole project is called Postcards from Utopia. The idea being that there are the external utopias that we go seeking for, and then there's the utopias that we try to create within ourselves, and looking through that through the lens of photography and memory, um, and trying to understand just what we're creating and why and how we do that. So if you go looking through those postcards, make sure that you turn them over because there's writing on the back of all of them as well. <laughs> well my name's Dave H and I made a, a camping, little camping scene on the ground there uh, just with a bunch of electronics that I brought. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like a, well, yeah, a little camp out, my little utopia world. Uh, also, this is Dave's fan. I don't like talking. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave's fan speaks for <laughs> My name's Keith Evans. Um, I did the piece in a corner uh, called um, Out of Depth, which is uh, using stereo vision and uh, it incorporates some elements of photos and uh, with an object that uh, was acquired here in town and um, it just interpreting space and air and water effects and um, yeah and and that that uh, space is always being uh, created in our minds and uh, so uh, my name is Taliesin uh, I'm presenting I'm presenting a, a work called Orion Sound Station that's about um, the U U.S. government's involvement in a massacre in 2010 in Jamaica, um, where something between like 70 and 150 civilians were murdered by the police and military. Um, a lot of my work's about uh, the superstructures of power and especially the invisible ways in which uh, power exerts itself or is transferred um, to avoid certain types of responsibility. And this work is the culmination of about eight years of um, living and working and going to Jamaica to work on uh, pieces about music and the way in which culture responds to oppression there. Um, my name is Aubrey Triniman, and my intention with this group show was to um, have an immersive, spontaneous, cathartic experience of just coming to a new place. And so 
that ended up culminating in meeting someone and photographing them for a day and then um, yeah just documenting whatever unfolded and a lot of that was just very spontaneous and that's what I wanted um, so yeah kind of started by walking around the town and seeing what met me and then met a really interesting special person and spent the day with them and we kind of just took turns taking portraits of one another and he was a very um, he was a yes man because he agreed to take portraits of me and I had I have a wedding dress that I keep in my car as a reminder to um, my active marriage to myself which sounds like a gimmick but it's very sincere um, place that I'm at right now so I carry that in a wedding veil um, and he was very much game to take portraits of me instead of me doing self-portraits and so we just kind of played and it's about the power of play and spontaneous um, curiosity. Hi, my name is Kate Sterlin, and um, my piece is called Worship. Um, and it's, uh, for me, it was an exploration into color photography, which I mostly do black and white, so this was a challenge for me. Um, and it's the 16 um, different shots almost at the end of the gallery. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> Hello. My name is Clay Shank, and my work is on the center of the back wall with all the skateboard stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the metal sculptures on the floor are things that Dave and Bo and I worked on around this area. Utilizing the scraps from over there, they serve as launch ramps and portable ways to navigate treacherous terrain and uh, they serve as a nice reminder that you can make something out of nothing and those collages there on the wall too are made of found materials also reminding us to make the most of what we have embody our vulture spirit and uh, above that there's a bunch of pictures of skateboard scenes on the Crow Creek Reservation in South Dakota which is part of a uh, life that I live which is out there and involves skateboarding those photos they <coughs> aim to catch the vibe of the place, which can be pretty desperate, sad, but also really beautiful. And um, there's a little zine there, which encourages skateboarding as a positive social influence anywhere, focusing mostly on what it could do for the Rosebud Reservation, where skateboard advocates are focusing their efforts. There's been a lot of good stuff happening in South Dakota for poor communities and Rosebud is the next place where we want to make a make a little bit of a fire as far as a skateboard community. Other than that there's a there's a screen there playing my first film called Journey to Skate Boulder which Perry thought would be a fun thing to show you. It has no volume, but there's no dialogue in it, so it's kind of a cool ride. If nothing else, it's an artist statement, and you know a little bit more about me. Thanks for being here, everybody. We're really honored to be talking. I think that's good. Are we back? Yes, we're back. Cool. So I think now we're going to have a little bit of a, an, an open conversation. I've drafted a few questions that sort of reference the show and the first iteration of the show that I saw um, of this project in Bolinas in um, November or December? February. Uh, February? Really? February. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've drafted a few questions, but then we hope, especially if you've participated or met or spent time with the artist or come to any of the events, if you had questions or comments or um, you know, uh, 
your, share your experience, we'll, we'll, we'll do that later. Um, so the first question that I have uh, is about, uh, it says, what are some elements of this work and exhibit that reflect the geography of your home, and do you see overlap or similarities between these communities? <coughs> Oh, yeah, I tell you one thing. <laughs> Moro Bay, it's, uh, it's got a layout a lot like our home. In fact, when you swim across from the rock over to the sandbar, you guys don't have a bunch of condos lining it, but we have a lagoon in the same way, and that Moro Rock is kind of like our uh, little mesa in the Venus. And, uh, yeah, there are some. <laughs> oh, okay, that sounds good. Thought, thoughts on place. Um, yeah, our community. I kind of would imagine not unlike your community is going through a lot of changes and housing is increasingly difficult and unstable. There's a kind of feeling of precarity, uh, especially among the younger people. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think, I don't know, I, for myself, I, I, I love where we live. It's a little enclave. It's um, yeah, small, very community oriented. I think everyone knows everybody. And uh, so much of the rest of my life feels really transient. I'm tra traveling a bit. <clears throat> and that's kind of the place where I feel rooted and, 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 and able to create. Uh, and then this, uh, the community is largely about the people that comprise it. And we have a wonderful group of people and a, and a really kind of intergenerational uh, uh, group of friends and, and artists that I, I feel really supported by and, and happy to work with. So that's, um, yeah, I guess it's, it's place and the people that, that inhabit it and the greater ecology. We have a, a really, uh, we've, it's not a very developed town. There's a lot of animals and a diversity of, of, uh, of wildlife that, that make it feel really great to be a part of. I think it's also interesting that we, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's interesting that we kind of rolled into town as a group and have so far only gone to like the same four places over and over and over again, as if we're still in the town that only has two places to eat. Um, but yeah, it's kind of between the Buttercup Bakery and uh, the Sunshine Health Food Store. Big shout and out to Dolly's Donuts. Dolly's Donuts, um, Tacos de Mexico. We, we've kind of, you know, just quadrangled our way. Um, so. Maybe all smallish towns are the same and you just find the things that you like and that's what makes them familiar and lovely and you work within that and I don't know, there's just there's a really beautiful thing to that, I think. So if you guys come out, we'll see if you do the same thing. <laughs> all I'd just like to add about just the general ecology is that there's obviously such uh, unique and interesting communities of non-human lives in the ecology where the ocean meets the land and then and all kinds of geology and so there's there's and it's very similar here and and so it, it's very easy to sort of sink into it and like find out the, the little differences and, the, and, and be really excited and inspired so. Yeah, we don't have otters. You guys have otters, and yes. that's really, really cool. <laughs> you have seals? Yes. Oh, yeah. Seals and seal Pelicans? Yes. Lots yes. of pelicans. Lots of pelicans. Where is it? Oh, where is it? It's north of San Francisco, about an hour, uh, just over the mountain, by the beach. Emma? Yeah. So, you guys in Bolinas know that people don't know where you live because the myth is the sign is always <laughs> taken down and it doesn't exist. We scramble Google so Maps all the time. <laughs> my question is should we take our signs down? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Let's see, yeah, I don't really have a yeah, proposal for that, but um, when I when I first moved to Bolinas, oh, <laughs> yeah, when I first moved to Bolinas, um, I was like really wanting to tread lightly, and I knew that it was a community that was very protective and kind of you know has a reputation of being hostile to outsiders and mm -hmm. very anti-tourist. Um, and at first I was like, I, I felt kind of uncomfortable and just really wanted to be respectful and tread lightly and wasn't sure about that whole um, sentiment and idea. And the more I became part of the community, I realized that it wasn't necessarily a, a hostility uh, and like othering and you know being exclusive, but that it was actually a, an extremely inclusive community that um, very intergenerational, very interclass, um, very, um, you know, make room for everybody. And uh, the really special thing about our town is that we really do, you know, make room for everybody and <clears throat> include everybody and that is want, willing to participate in a genuine, heartfelt way and um, in a way that I've never experienced before and that is really, really beautiful. Um, and the hostility does come from, you know, kind of people coming in and wanting to just sort of take advantage or like have a wild weekend and leave and, you know, leave their trash and, you know, be like kind of selfish and not engage in the community. Um, because, you know, it, it is a beautiful place just as this is a beautiful place, but the most beautiful thing about it is the community and the relationships that are just really special. And I, you know, I am protective of it and I also just want it replicated throughout you know, yeah. all communities, mm -hmm. just that sentiment. And yeah, <laughs> and that way I want to share it. <laughs> I've lived there for a long, long time, many decades, and uh, the woman at a museum, the gallery in our little town said, what have I done lately for the town? And that's kind of the motto that everybody has, that you contribute something to the town. That's what feels the best. Yeah, yeah that sums it all up for me. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in line of that, um, do you feel like as artists, there are you know, challenges or true benefits of working in a small rural community? This is a potentially a question for myself too in this small community, but, but for our students and, and for professional artists practicing in this area, um, what are some of the benefits or lacks of benefits of working in rural communities? Yep, so I can talk too, if it's easier. Um, I get really excited about that question, Emma, because I feel like there, when you have community, you have support, right? And especially like multi-generational community, that's so powerful. But I felt like where we're from in Bolinas, it feels like a playground in a lot of ways. Like I can't think of any lack of platform for experimentation. And even just down to the literal, like there's space, like there's a community center that you can rent for cheap or free. And it's like they, the community wants you to hold events there. And it has such a long history of getting weird and like <laughs> experimenting and ritualizing communally that I feel like it's such a safe zone for anything. And there are just multiple forms of that. And so that's a good reminder, I think, for anybody who has resources like this place is amazing. The resources that you guys have are incredible. And I think just to remind my own self that there's a playground wherever you are and to just, I don't know, use your imagination to take advantage of the platforms that are that already exist instead of pre, like prescribed platforms, like a certain type of gallery or setting, like really let your art inform that and the community will show up as long as you're like spreading the word and asking people to come. So platforms take many, many forms. Yeah, I think I, I moved up to Bo kind of to have like a sanctuary space from doing really emotionally exhausting documentary work and um, having a place where you feel safe and seen 
um, even if it is kind of like uh, an increasingly expensive uh, kind of like mostly white, like trapped in the past utopia, is uh, you know is like is is really valuable for me, and I, I think for me part of the commitment to living there is is also participating in the world outside of these zones because it's also like very insular, um, and the kind of navel gazing and nostalgia, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, is not the kind of paradigm that we need to be currently inhabiting on this planet. Um, but is also one that is really relaxing and, and quite pleasurable. So I think it's an interesting balance of, of living in these zones while also you know, maintaining that it's, it's such an incredible privilege to be there. And I think, at least for me, that involves trying to understand how you know, we engage with the rest of the world. Hey, Aubrey, has a comment. <laughs> Just like what you're saying about trapped in the past. Um, I just think even that in and of itself, like your feelings about that, if you have community, like if you have a smaller group of anybody, which is a community, right, you can at least have a conversation about that, about being trapped in the past or whatever. Like there's place, there's things about Bolinas that I feel like I would like to be more progressive or whatever, but I feel fully enabled because there's such communication. It's possible, like that's the first step where like maybe you have political beliefs or like you feel stuck in a lot of ways and you don't know how to productively use that as output and like be heard. If you can create community, you can have a conversation and that's the first step. So I'm gonna ask Tally later about being trapped in the past <laughs> because I'm interested in that and we'll have a conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I have some thoughts on, on making art in smaller communities. Um, it's such a global, digitally connected world now that, it, I mean, it's kind of nice to see a decentering of arts from the major urban environments and less of a need for it. And so many of them have become so prohibitively expensive, uh, including the Art Little Enclave, which is really close to a, a major city and major airport, which makes it very helpful uh, in that respect. <coughs> but um, yeah, I think it's it's cool to be part of a global conversation, and hopefully not on the like neoliberal homogenizing front of that. And uh, um, I've been reading uh, Edouard Glisson, is uh, is a Martinique postcolonial uh, philosopher, and he has this notion of mondialité that um, uh, Hans Ulrich Oberst has kind of been championing very vocally with a contingent within the kind of international art conversation and uh, I really like this concept it's just basically that uh, as opposed to globalization you have a global dialogue and it doesn't seek uh, erasure or, or um, a domination but rather to, to a kind of creolization to use his term uh, a blending or a hybridity and, and yeah I think a lot of people in our little community travel a lot too and, and it feels like there's a lot of interesting conversations happening. And most of the work that, that I put into this, I mean, there are some stuff that are shot in the town, but it's, you know, it's, it's all over Europe and New York and LA. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's global in scope, as I feel like we're all kind of increasingly globally aware. Um. So one of the coolest things for me in moving to Bolinas, which I only did about a year ago, um, was meeting all these people. And some of them I had known before from coming up there a lot. Um, and you know, a few of them I met just from being in the water. But most of these people became my friends uh, because of the first Tributaries show that we did. And having only lived in West Marin for six months, you know, being invited to do that show and having the engagement with everybody um, and getting to meet Ilka, whose work I had long admired, and just having this experience of feeling like I was making art with other artists um, who were also you know, becoming my friends was really, really special. And I think that that is something that you can only do in a small community, because then you see these people all the time at the market, in the street, whatever it is, and you're making art with them, but they also become your friends, which wouldn't happen in a larger city. 
Also, you can be alone. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. That's okay. I agree with that, so. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I don't know that I agree with the point about. I don't think it would happen in a larger city. Um, mostly because I only lived in larger cities except for this. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think that it's the kind of dialogue that you're open to and what you create and there's a reaching out and a connection and discovery and that can happen I think anywhere I mean in LA I've lived in certain neighborhoods you go to the same place to go shopping to go out buy your food you know walk your dog that kind of thing so those opportunities I think to create small town and community exist everywhere and it's up to each of us if we want that to take responsibility for making that happen it may feel less safe to do it in an urban environment than it does in what you described as a protected safe place to come home to where you're seeing the same people all the time to make that approach in a more chaotic urban situation but I think that it's also I think very I, possible. I've meant that more in like the physicality of it because living in a large city, I lived in San Francisco for 20 years and so you would go and you would do something and at the end of the day you would go home and some people went home to one neighborhood and some people went home to the other and so in a small town you probably walk home down the same street mm -hmm. you know and it's so there's more, there's, yeah, yeah. There's more <laughs> likelihood of seeing each other and so that's kind of what I was getting at is that it's not so much that you're not trying to forge these relationships, it's just that it's much easier to do so mm -hmm. in a small community because you're literally running into people all the time. Because there's only one street? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's two. How many people sucks. are in Bolinas? <laughs> it's true. Well, that's Ten people in Bolinas? How many yeah, people? Yes, she asked how many people are in Bolinas. Nobody's there right now. A thousand and, and most of them don't live there. Just a thousand, okay. Yeah, I think, I don't know. But in, the, in that, in that ballpark. Two thousand. Like, uh, you feel like you see the same. Oh, yeah, I gotta say, I grew up in Manhattan, small island off the east coast. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere you go, you bump into a, another fucking artist. And, uh, now I live in Los Osos, and everywhere I go, I bump into. <laughs> <a different artist. laughs> You see him at Pagnol Bakery? Yeah. I just wanted to yeah, plug that place because it. it's so, so good. I did want to ask and, and have you guys share a little bit about that first iteration of the Tributary Show and sort of how it came to be and, um, and where you see it going next after the, I know this, the, the project here at Cuesta was, was different than that and that I invited them here for a week and they used the Cuesta facilities and worked with, worked with students and developed new work. They worked a, a lot. Um, uh, but uh, I think there's still a lot of connections to that first original show, um, mainly because of you guys, and I don't know if you had thoughts on that. Dave? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm happy to... Go ahead, um, Yeah, I think we've kind of been talking about doing a group show for a while, a group of us in Bolinas, and came together very organically, and there was a nice artist-run space that's really affordable to rent downtown. Um, and so we just took that and kind of went and printed a bunch of mostly photo work uh, so with this about- this is the evolution of the show that you had yeah. in February? Yeah, right. exactly. Yes. Yes. Mm. Which, which came- with some, with some local stuff, photos put in to it. Yeah, yeah. The, f the first show kind of we threw together in a month or two. There was a, an opening, like a, a same so artist, same group, similar configuration. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the, the core, uh, pretty much everyone here, plus a few more. Um, so, can you talk as artists about uh, projecting from February to now? What that huh. experience was like, and it, you know how you tweaked it and presented around the corner and that. Yeah, questions on how you thought about making this with that time, with that gestation period, how you approach the work. I'll talk a little bit. I was really excited to explore this area with the intent of having, I came here with one photograph that I had in the previous show, and 
took that idea and wanted to emulate it. What I found here, so more conversation with the, this place. So and it was also kind of a contemplative. Um, this this place informing my thought process and what was already going through my mind, and I think a lot of other people. It was a photograph of. Um, I have these thoughts that probably most people have of trying, thinking about something you would never do. And I said, I'm going to do it. So <laughs> I, um, I staged a band in a financial district in San Francisco. And it was a peaceful demonstration of um, modeling kelp across the street. Um, but I took off all my clothes and did a meditative walk across the crosswalk. Oh, yes. And had someone snap the image, and, so that's, uh, the image you to this show. that's the image I brought to this show. Yeah. And that evolved to the three stacks and the, the log. Yeah. The log. So we all went surfing over on that other side, yeah, and cool. um, that seeing that um, power structure um, was a metaphor in itself. But then to see it, you know, hidden behind the sand dunes and seeing people walk across that, it just clicked. Yeah. But no more naked you with the kelp? I mean, you don't like our kelp? Or well, what was available on that so beach? close to our kelp? <laughs> yeah, there were, there were different things. There was, there, there was um, well, there were different things on that beach that um, wasn't quite what I imagined. So yeah, I, again, was working with what was there. So there was a nice little dolphin uh, carcass without a head. That was interesting. Ooh. Yeah. But the, we saw live dolphins too. Really nice. <laughs> Me again. Um, only because one of the things that's in this show. So I got asked to be a part of the show kind of late. I mean, Perry says that we had like two or three months, but I feel like it was more a matter of weeks. Um, and, you know, he kind of looked at some of the stuff and we were talking about what he wanted to do and I had this idea. And so one of um, the pieces that I have is just a stack and you can take it and read it and, you know, make it a paper or a plan or whatever it is. But it, it's an email that I sent to my mother basically talking about what this project was like all of a sudden I realized that I wanted to do this project and I wanted to like encompass everything and it became like this you know whole like cloud around my brain and of course when it came time to print for the show I didn't have anything you know <laughs> that had anything to do with it and so this was an opportunity for me to like think on that a little bit more and widen the scope um, and then hopefully carry that forward for you know however long. Um, I just have one more question, and then we'll take any other questions and wrap up. But um, you know, I feel very strongly about uh, community colleges, colleges in general, but particularly Cuesta for, for what it does for us. I mean, clearly, what it does for our students, the, the resources that are here, the opportunities that are here, um, and how much support there is for a lot of people and a lot of different bodies, uh, journeys of life. I think it's a really radical and important thing to be working here and to. Um, a really important place for our community. Um, and I just wondered if any of you had, had started thinking about that and thought about um, the significance of, of working in a community college environment um, in particular. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everybody, there are so many, there's you know, you have ceramics, metalworking, woodworking, painting, printing, anything you might want to add. <laughs> anything that you want to do, you, you can just go over there and get it done. So. The more tools and things you know how to use, the that means you can make everything. So if you can imagine it, you can come here and take a class and make it. It's like where we're at. There is we don't have these facilities, so it is difficult to build. Uh, and so, yeah, the, the, it's one of the best reasons to go is to come here and make whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's out here. So. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to say how very much I appreciated everybody that let us use all their facilities, their computers, their printers, the materials, everything, the gallery, and 
I remember so very fondly that when I came to America, I'm from Germany, and uh, my mother said I could study whatever I wanted to do, and I decided to take up photography in a junior college, and that's where I learned all the photography I knew, which has given me so very much pleasure in my life. I couldn't always make a living with it, but it has given me the skills, and I see the instructors here teach just like I was taught, and to, for that to continue, and all the young people a few days ago coming for the first time and being so interested and seeing the first images yesterday in the darkroom, and just being so surprised about the magic. I just think public education is just very, very important. If we get any chances to vote for funding for that, we should always do it. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, so I, I personally went to eight years of community college uh, before transferring to a four year. <laughs> and I love community college and this is such a wonderful place and it's been, it's been so lovely to be here. And yeah, I just believe in community colleges wholeheartedly and just, yeah, I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> Can you tell us about Sylvana? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I used to live in artist warehouses for the last probably 15 years. It's kind of a way to get it done where you know everybody gets together and maybe there's a wood shop, metal shop, etc. Kind of like you have here. And uh, it was kind of coming to an end in San Francisco, and so I decided I would get a van and put in it everything that I do at the warehouse. And so I got this van in Houston, and then. But like a recording studio, dark room, uh, turntables, <laughs> typewriter. So you can just, I can do whatever I want. You're but it, I got, I got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm enrolling right now. <laughs> <laughs> interested. So yeah, so now I got the warehouse and the van. <laughs> Is it related to the van with the giant bug on top of it in the parking lot? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not three, two seats related. <laughs> <laughs> It's just sort of a... Is that yours? Well, that's my real estate. Oh, oh beautiful. So, I got <laughs> so they are related. Well, we, we, the geography bring, brought us together, and part of the geography is uh, we can't afford to make the work we'd like to do. This issue of making a living ties to these vehicles because we live in them, basically. Well, we have homes, but um, it's... It's, uh, you know, there were 2,500,000 people in the 50s, and now there's seven, I mean, billion, now there's seven billion. So this, this issue of every place around the world saying, oh, what are all these people doing here? It's just where, this is the, this is where we are, you know. So I built this structure on my van, van and I'm influenced by um, people that do it, do it well, and I tried my iteration of it. And, um, yeah, so I have, you know, a lot of people come into town with these, uh, what are they, the adventure vehicle, you know, with, you know, with a lot of capital, there's some beautiful, uh, what, you know, it, it's insane that what people are putting on their cars and how you can, you know, where, it's amazing. So I try to do my version of it and build a unique situation where um, instead of just having the storage container on the top using the, the rack that was on the truck. Um, I put it to the test and built a, uh, took a old tent poles and um, my studio mate here is, uh, she works with fabric and dyeing fabric. So we made, we altered a tent structure. I took the poles and um, put linen over it and fiberglassed that and uh, it ended up looking like a cicada shell, in a, <laughs> and so when I was making it, it was oh, a cocoon, it's a cocoon. And, and, and it was on the ground when I was making it, and when I put it on top, I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> what have I done? So, um, you guys are the butterflies. Yeah, and you know, I get a lot, The you know, the police look, they, they don't care, but everyone's like, is that legal? <laughs> So um, we're testing it out here. It's great. It's a good place to 
I can Working sleep in great. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's also really helpful if you get lost and you can't find your friends. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny the first day they were here. There's a, a number of really eccentric vehicles in this room. <laughs> like, oh dear. All these cars. Does anybody else have any questions about their work individually? Or? Yeah, I don't need that. Um, thank you. But I noticed a lot of the work is collections of things, collections of postcards, collections of images, collections of loose sight presentations, watercolor pieces. And it seems a nice reflection of community, these collections, but is was that conscious in a conversation between you, or was it an accident that much of the work evolved into these collections. I think we're all just borders. Just to reply briefly, I, I think um, yeah, there's we just all create these enormous de facto archives with social and with um, all the media that we produce. And then, like, there's just so much such a deluge of information. And, you um, mean humans, not just you guys. Right? Yeah, humans generally. You too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me that. <laughs> and yeah, and so just how to make sense of the deluge? It's just, kind of just such an overwhelming amount of stuff. And archives are interesting. But I think also to that question, like most of us didn't know what each other were doing until today. I mean, we kind of all like had had these conversations, but um, getting together and meeting was a really difficult thing, even though we live in a very small town. And so we only actually had one, well, one and a half meetings in the like four or five months that we've been planning this. And so it is interesting to see how many things overlap just maybe because of the way that our brains work. But there was actually no conversation earlier about you know what people's projects were and how they might intersect. Oh, maybe it's a good second to speak about some of the artists who couldn't be here but have work in the show. Um, no, go, go ahead. Okay. Um, we just, the most recent edition of the show came via text message about an hour ago from um, Havel Krug, who's a conceptual artist. He's been teaching at Europe all summer and wasn't able to make it down. And uh, he sent a text requesting that somebody take a pencil and write the three words, it hurts us somewhere on the wall. And um, you can remind me your name again. Pearl. Pearl, um, Pearl did that, so you guys can look for it in the gallery if you'd like. Um, Vanessa, Vanessa um, Warren, that's how you pronounce her last name. She uh, just gave birth and wasn't able to make it. She included these really beautiful watercolors. Um, and then <clears throat> there's a collection of correspondence, all the cat cards you might have noticed in the gallery when you came in, uh, between two friends, one passed away last year, and uh, she was really fond of cats, clearly, and her, uh, her our friend Tina Ann, um, who I think inherited a greeting card company, uh, had this incredible abundance of cat cards that she would send for, for every conceivable occasion. And, and I was giving Janet a haircut uh, one day, and I noticed this really kind of massive stack of cat cards, and she, she told me it was all from Tina Ann, Really beautiful, actually. And, and uh, after Janet passed, um, her sister took them and cut the backs off in order to recycle them and send them to her grandkids. So they're going to have this second life. And they're just stopped here for a month in San Luis Obispo before they continue on. <laughs> I think she sent her a card every day, as I remember, while she was sick. Any idea what that owl is doing in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the owl was a, a note from um, Janet's yeah. sister to me that was saying, um, uh, just, it, here's the collection, and expressing her uh, kind of gratitude for, for the, the engagement that we had about it. And, um, I thought it was fitting to include, because you know, an owl in some cultures is this uh, sign of transition. And, uh, we have some of the owls here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I was on the Creso Plain, and so this beautiful white owl had painted rock. Um, oh. Yeah, there's these kind of uh, Shumash paintings of, of what look like owls. You know? mm -hmm. The petroglyphs, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
which seemed remarkably like um, kind of not enigmatic. There was like an owl and an owl and a thing that looked like a snake and a rattlesnake. And, and it all seemed, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I just couldn't believe how, how, how much they related to what we were actually experiencing when we were there. So it's kind of an interesting experience. Em and I went down before the show. I just want to say, forgive me, I can't remember your name. My name? Ashley? Yeah, Ashley. Yeah. Um, your piece was probably the most impactful for me with the interactive and what you had to write about it. And then also your photos where you reenacted with your father. Um, just because I have similar experiences with myself, with my family. And I just want to let you know that, that like, it, it, it actually, holding that actually hit me. So it was really something else. So it's working. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I just wanted to express it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I encourage all of you after this is done to, to go back to the gallery and, and find find these people if you remember what their work is and um, yeah, I just um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to like um, part of part of my work and part of just you know moving through life as a human. Um, you know, I, I deal with a lot of anxiety and depression and. You know, the, the biggest uh, difficulty in that is the feeling alone with it. And so I really, you know, part of part of my work is to kind of normalize and to kind of, you know, encourage compassion and not feeling so alone. So that really is, I feel like a huge part of the suffering is just the, you know, relieving you from this. So, yeah, thank you. I agree. Thank you. And the more you look, the more you see. Yeah, we're all in this together, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, last year I hosted a Light and Bones Parade in an art show in Baywood Park. And as I was listening to you guys talk about vehicles, I just went, wow, that's just really an unbelievable expression of art. You know, the individuality. I'm actually working on an adventure vehicle, I call it. But it's, um, to me, it's a healing process. Uh, my dog just passed away, a few friends just passed away. And I find working through that, uh, I have to be tactile. Kind of like you holding those globes, it takes it to another place so you can go through the healing process. Mm -hmm. But this is going to happen. We're doing one September 8th, which is in about three weeks. And um, the boat parade is kind of morphing into this wonderful community event where we launch small boats and crafts. But the art part, I didn't know what I was going to do about it. Um, you have professional artists. I'm here in Los Osos Bay with Park. And I, I'm just struggling. OK, we're just kind of doing the same art show, putting up pieces. And listening to you, I really started developing a whole concept. I want people to bring their adventure vehicles. And that <laughs> would be the show. It would be so much about the next generation, the transition, uh, the whole, there's expression about the consciousness of where to live, the art. It's an expression about you. There's surfboards on top. There's equipment inside. There's an availability to work. I just saw this as, wow, this is the real contemporary art show that can happen. So you guys are all going to stick around, right? <laughs> well, I'm giving you an invite. <laughs> and you will be, you know, uh, hosted. And, and I'm probably going to have to put this all out there to my little community of Baywood Park, which is like both. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't spend more time with you guys. I've been going through a tough time myself. But it was all developing. I've been going through a healing, and it's all about my vehicle. The more you talked about it, the yeah. more it became uh, apparent what I'm going to be doing. Let's, let's go. Yeah, I hope you guys can connect after. And again, as, as I was saying, if, if after this is over, I encourage you to, to find these guys and talk to them individual about the work. There's a lot, um, a lot of depth, I think, in each of the installations that they've done that is worth having a conversation about that we can't address in a, in a panel of 12 people. So, um, 
I have a few thank yous and then I'll release you. Um, it's been a very, you know, wild and fun time to have all these people here and working in the department and faculty have been incredibly supportive. Um, troubleshooting, uh, allowing them to use the space, letting them interrupt some of their classes, inviting them to talk in some of their classes. Um, so big, big thanks to this department for um, being so supportive. Yeah. To, to Bo, who's been an angel among men. He's a, a <laughs> but also to Richard, who's been oh. a shooter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's safe to say that without either of their support, this show would not have manifested in the way that it did. So, so big thanks to, to them. And Alonzo. Yeah, there's a there's all so many things. I think uh, in a time where there's there's not a lot of funding for the arts or support for the arts, it's really amazing, especially in this small community, to or the gallery to have the support it does from the MEOC Trust. And um, I can't say it enough. So big, big thanks to the MEOC. Part of the community I know, thank you to Emma because she brings the best art in this whole area to this community, and I would go out of my mind if you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs>